Hey folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to render out displacement maps. Not just displacement maps, but normal maps, colour maps and roughness maps. It's not a texture baking tutorial. Instead, I'll show you a different method of extracting all your maps. Let's open Blender. The first thing I'll do is I'm going to delete the default cube. I'll delete the default lamp. I'm going to select my camera. I'm going to hit numpad 7 to go into top view. I'm going to hit control out numpad 0. And that will align my camera to the view. I'll then go over to my object data over here. I'm going to set the X and Y axes on the local transform to 0. And on the Z, I'm going to type in 2 for 2 meters. Excellent. I then go to my camera data over here. I'm going to change it from perspective to orthographic. I'll hit numpad 0, go back into camera view. I'll then go to my output settings over here. I'll then change the resolution on X and Y to 4096. And that will give you a 4K resolution. I'm going to change my resolution down to 1K. So I'm going to type in 25 for 25%. 25% of 4K is 1K. And that is simply to decrease the render times for this tutorial. I'm going to use my Rocking Stones Essentials Asset Pack just as an example. But you can use anything in your scene. So I'm going to append that asset now. So I'm going to hit F4. I'm going to go to Append. I'm going to locate my asset pack. This is the file. I'll just append that. There we go. It's appended into the scene. I'm going to have to center this with the world. So I'm going to select that object. I'm going to hit numpad 7 to go into top view. I'm going to go to my object data over here. And under Y axis, I'm just going to type in 0. I'll then hit numpad 0 to go into camera view. Maybe we can adjust our camera so it encompasses more of the scene. I'm going to select my camera. I'll go to my camera data down here. It's going to increase this orthographic view till it encompasses everything. Round about there. Now this asset pack is for sale on my website or Blender Market. I wouldn't buy it now because it's just an essentials pack. It's only got like seven assets in. I will be expanding this in the year. So anyway, we've got our scene. You can put anything in your scene. Scatter some vegetation, bolts, anything you like, even geometric patterns. So now I want to basically bake all this data into normal maps, displacement maps, color maps, and roughness maps. So I'm going to hit numpad zero to go into camera view i'm going to increase this window up here and i'm going to change this to the shader editor i'll hit n to hide the end panel and then i'm going to go to view layer over here i'm going to enable mist which will be our displacement map i'm going to enable normal for our normal maps under diffuse i'm going to enable color down here where it says other i'm going to enable ambient oculation i'll then scroll down to where it says shader aov i'm going to click new and i'll rename this to roughness so this is where our roughness map data is going to be stored we're going to change it from color to value because roughness is just black and white zero to one so now if i select my plane where the asset pack is i'll just mute that so i'm going to mute the asset pack and as you can see it's actually got a material on there so with the plane selected i'm going to go to the shader editor i'll then hit shift a and type in ao for aov and then we're going to select aov output i'll go back to my view layer over here i'll scroll down to the shader aov and over for roughness i'm going to hit Control c to copy that i'll then go over to my shader editor where it says aov output i hit Control v and paste that roughness in there and whatever's plugged into your roughness on your principal bsdf i'm going to plug into the value socket of the aov output i'm going to do that for every single asset in my scene so i'm going to select all these stones and all these rocks i hit shift a type in ao for aov and then choose aov output i'll take the roughness value from the principal bsdf and plug it into the value of the AOV output. I'll then hit Control V and paste the roughness value in there. Now, instead of adding this every time, I'm gonna select this node. I'm gonna hit Control C. I'll then choose the next asset. I'll then hit Control V to paste that and then plug the roughness into the value. And I'll do the same for all of these other assets. Okay, now that's done. I'm gonna hide these assets because we don't need to see them in the viewport. I'll select the plane. I'm going to re-enable the geometry nodes modifier. Maybe I'll turn off overlays just so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. I hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'm just going to shimmy some of these about until I've got something that I like. Maybe something around there. That'll be absolutely fine. So I'm going to increase this window up here. I'll navigate to this button. I'm going to click this button and I'm going to change it to compositor. I'm going to click use nodes. I'm going to delete the composite node. We don't need that. I'll then hit shift A, go to output and we're going to choose file output. I'm going to hit N. To open up the end panel and then click the no tab on the right here i'll scroll down where it says image i'm going to replace this name with color i'm going to click add input and i'm going to change this to ao for ambient oculation i'll click add input i'm going to change this to roughness i'll add another input and we'll name this to normal add input and we'll name this to 
displacement all of my files are set to PNG you can use OpenEXR or JPEG whatever format you prefer I then click this button on the file output I'm going to choose a file location where to save my textures I'll then click accept I'm going to go over to my render settings over here I'm going to change the noise threshold to 0.025 maybe max samples of 64 I'm going to scroll down to where it says light paths down here. I'm going to reduce the diffuse and glossy down to two bounces. I'll disable reflective and refractive core sticks. I'm going to go to color management down at the bottom. I'm going to change it from AGX to Filmic. We haven't got a light in our scene. So at the moment I'm in cycles. If I go into rendered view, we're not going to see anything apart from what the world shader is producing, which is this gray value here. Let's just turn that up to white. We're not going to be using this lighting at all. There's one more step we need to do to get the displacement map working. I'll enable the overlays. I'm going to select my camera. And if you remember, in view layer, we enabled this mist option. Now we need to set the thresholds for the mist up. So I'm going to hit numpad one to go into front view. And with my camera selected, I'm going to go to my camera data over here. And under viewport display, I'm going to click mist. And what that will do, it will add this line, which is the threshold. And to adjust the mist depth, we go to our world settings over here, expand the mist pass options here. So I'm going to bring this start value up to the very top of where this rock is, because that's the highest thing in the scene. So I'm going to bring the start point for the mist up to maybe around about there. And for the depth, I'm going to decrease this value until it touches the bottom, maybe so it overlaps a tiny bit, something around about there. We want this threshold to be slightly higher and slightly lower than the highest and lowest objects in your scene. And that will give us a bit more range to play with in the compositor. I then hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'm going to select my render layers. I'm going to hit control shift left click select your mouse and that will connect a viewer node to your render layers. I then hit F12. So when that's rendered, we're going to close this window, we're going to increase the compositor window up here and over here on the right hand side. I'm going to click the view tab and I'm going to select backdrop and then we can see what we're doing. Maybe I'll click fit just to ensure that we can see the whole thing. So now if I hit control shift and left click the render layers and we can see all of our maps. Excellent. So the first map we'll deal with will be the mist map which is the displacement map. So I'm going to flip this image. We can do it with a color ramp or a map range node. Let's use a map range node. So I'm going to hit shift A, go to utilities and we'll choose map range. I'm going to pop that in between there and we're going to flip the two min and two max. So two min will be one and two max will be zero. And now we can adjust the from max, which will be the lowest point until you see black appearing in the scene. So I'm going to set mine to, let's say 0.95. We then plug that value from the map range into the displacement. The next one is the normal map. Now we need to normalize this because at the moment this normal map is all over the place. So I'm going to hit shift A. I'm going to go to color mix and we choose mix color. I'm going to set this to add. I'll duplicate the color mix node. I'll pop it into here. I'll then change it to multiply. Now we need to change the gamma color space of this image because at the moment is in linear. So I hit shift A, go to color, adjust and we choose gamma. I'll pop that into here and I'll change the gamma to 2.2, something around there. Under normal circumstances, this setup is absolutely fine, but I know for a fact all the normals in my assets have been adjusted in the shader editor. So I need to reduce this value to 0.5 you should be absolutely fine, set to one, and that's our normal map. So then I plug the image socket from the gamma node into the normal of the file output. The next one we're gonna change is diffuse color. That should be good as it is because it's a flat color with no shading. So we'll just plug that diffuse color straight into the color of the file output. The next one is ambient oculation. I'll plug that into the viewer node. That should be fine as it is. So I'll plug the ambient oculation into the AO socket of the file output. And finally, the roughness, we might need to adjust this. So I'm gonna plug the roughness map into the viewer node. Yep, we need to adjust this. So in between this viewer node and the roughness socket, so I'll hit shift A, go to color and we choose color ramp and I'll pop that in between the roughness and the viewer node. And for the black value, I'm going to set this to a position of 0.75, something around there. Maybe we can actually increase that some more and black will be 100% shiny and white will be 100% rough. And my stones, I know for a fact, they're not 100% shiny. So I'll take this black value and I'm going to turn it up to 0.5. And now we can take this roughness value from the color ramp and plug it into the roughness socket of the file output. Now for this file output to work, instead of pushing F12, we're going to have to click Control F12 like we would to render out an animation. But before I do that, I'm going to take my cursor to the bottom left until I see a crosshair. I'm going to left click and drag 
to open up a new window i'll then change it from compositor to timeline and on my timeline i'm going to change the end frame to one so we're only rendering one frame so now i'm going to increase the final resolution so i'm going to go to my output i'm going to change the resolution to 100 percent it's going to render out as 4k images i want maximum quality so on all my assets i've actually got decimate modifiers so i'm going to enable my rocking stones assets over here and for each of these i'm going to go to my modifiers and i've got a decimate modifier on there for optimization i'm just going to disable the decimate modifier for render and viewport on each of these assets i'll then hide these collections I'll increase this window. As you can see, we've got a lot more detail on the rocks now. There's one more step to perform before we render out our image textures. So go to File, Save As, and then save your file. I'm gonna save my file as Like and Subscribe. Thanks folks, you absolute legends. And then click Save As. And now we can hit Control F12, and that will render out our image textures. Keep an eye on the top left here because you want to wait until it's finished compositing. Mine's done, so I'll click escape, close that window. I'm then going to take my cursor to the bottom left until I see a crosshair. I'm going to collapse the timeline. I'll drag this down. I'm going to change it from compositor to shader editor. I'll then select this object. I'm going to hide that from viewport and render. I'll click this button. I'll just enable all of these. Just make sure it's hidden from viewport and render. You can open a new project. Now let's put these textures to work. So I'm going to hit shift A, go to mesh and we choose plane. I'm going to tab into edit mode. I'm going to hit S for enter to scale it up by four. I'll right click. I'm going to choose subdivide and I'm going to choose 64 cuts. I'll then tab out of edit mode. I'm going to go to my modifiers over here. I'm going to click add modifier. I'll go to generate and I'll choose subdivide division surface i'm going to set that at level two for my final i'm going to probably set this to four and with the plane selected i'm going to click new to add a new material i hit n to close the end panel and with my principal bsdf selected i'm going to hit Control t that will only work with the node wrangler enabled which is edit preferences and under add-ons search for node for node wrangler enable that and click save preferences i then hit g to drag that across i click open i'll navigate to the folder where i saved my images i'm going to select color we're going to ignore this one and we're just going to select color i click open image let's go into viewport shading and with this color texture selected i'm going to hit Control shift d and that will duplicate that node whilst maintaining the connection to the mapping node i'll then click the x to delete the color texture from this node i'll click open navigate to your folder where you've got all your textures i'm going to select ao for ambient oculation I'm going to change the color space from sRGB to non-linear. I then hit Shift A, go to color, and we choose mix color. I'm going to pop that in between the color and the principal BSDF. I'm going to plug the color from the ambient oculation map into the bottom socket of the mix color, and I'm going to change the mix type to multiply. And then I'm going to turn the factor all the way up to one. I'll then select this color texture. I hit Control Shift D to duplicate while maintaining the connection. I'll get rid of that texture. I'm going to click Open, navigate to the folder where you've got your texture maps, and for this one, I'm going to choose roughness click open i'm going to change it from srgb to non-color data and i'll plug that straight into the roughness i'll then hit Control shift d to duplicate that node delete that texture slot I'll click open navigate to your folder where you've got your images i'm going to select normal for the normal map i'll click open i'm going to change this from srgb to non-color data i'll then plug this into the normal socket of the principal bsdf Let's just increase this window a bit and finally select this normal map i hit Control shift d to duplicate i'll pop it down here i'll delete the normal map and i'll click open navigate to your folder where you've got your image textures and i'm going to select displacement map i'll then click open again change it from srgb to non-color data hit shift a go to vector and we choose displacement i'm going to plug the color from the displacement map into the height of the displacement node I'll then drag this displacement node over to here and plug the displacement into the displacement socket of the material output. Nothing's going to happen just yet because we need to set the material to accept displacement. So go over to here to your material tab, scroll down until you see settings, expand these options and change the surface type from displacement bump only to displacement and bump. Now you can see we've got displacement. Excellent. Let's just go into rendered view. Maybe I'll change the world to accept an HDR. I'm going to hit numpad zero to go into camera view. I'm going to change the camera type so i'm going to select my camera and with your camera data down here i'm going to change it from orthographic to perspective maybe i'll keep the focal length at 50 mil but i'm going to increase the height of the camera something around there 
There are limitations with displacement maps on concave sides. You're going to see stretching, but from certain angles, it's pretty good. If you want to decrease this stretching a bit, you can select your plane. You go over to your modifiers and increase your levels on your subdivision surface. So I'm going to set mine to four. You can also use micro displacement, which will be going into your render settings, changing this from supported to experimental. I'm just going to keep it as that. And of course, you can change the height of your displacement by using the scale on your displacement map here. I'm just going to set mine to 0.75. I think that will do me excellent. Maybe I'll select my camera. It's going to change the resolution to 1920 by 1080. So that's how you can bake your scene into textures. It's a really handy feature, especially using this shader AOV to separate out your roughness from all your textures and your metalness. That's all for now, folks. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please hit like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. Have a great day. Level up. And thanks for watching.